So I've been asked today to talk about the interpretation of spine MRIs in spondyloarthropathies. And first of all, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the organizing committee for inviting me. It's not common to get uh, radiologists speaking at rheumatology conferences, so thank you for the invitation. We have called this a rheumatologist edition. So what, what does that mean? So as a rheumatologist, you are not reporting the scan, but you need to have a un good understanding of what's going on in the scan. So why is that? Because the radiologist that you would normally refer to may not have background knowledge or an interest in SPA imaging. And also, if you see something, you're able to go down to the radiologist and talk to them about it with a lot of background knowledge so you can have an informed discussion rather than go down there and just sort of you know, point to things and not be sure. So I think as a rheumatologist, it's actually very important for you to have a general understanding of how to look at a scan and what to look for. So in order to do that, you really need to have a structure. And that's the structure we're going to go through in this talk. And we're going to look at how to look at a scan, what to look for, and where to look for these things. So you should have an understanding of the sequences. What are the different types of signal abnormalities that you're likely to see? How to interpret them as either active changes or more chronic structural changes? And then have a structure of how to assess the scan and what to assess. So if we look at sequences, let's start with that. So sequences can get very, very confusing. There's a whole lot of physics with it. We're not going to even touch physics. But what you do need to know are the basic scans that are very commonly done. And these are the T1, T2, the T2 fat saturated or stir scans, and sometimes post contrast scans. So we're going to go through these different types of scans. So if we start with a T1 weighted scan, again, we're not going to look at the physics. I think what you need to know is how do I know when I look at a scan, is it T1 or T2? So the easiest way to know whether it's a T1 weighted scan is to look at the CSF. So here's the uh, thecal sac. The thecal sac contents are black. Okay, so fluid on a T1 weighted sequence is dark. It's low signal. You'll see also that pelvic fat. So fat is very bright on T1. But this on its own is not enough because T2 weighted scans can also have bright fat. So the simplest way is to look at the CSF and see whether it's dark or not. Another couple of ways is to look at the corners of the images. And most commonly, they will tell you what sort of scan it is. So here you can see, you may not be able to see that, but it says T1 sagittal. So this is a T1 weighted scan. And if you really want to, you can look at the T and TR. These are physics related things, but I don't think it's worth doing that. So either look at the CSF for it being dark or look up here and find the text that tells you what sort of scan it is. Okay, what about T2 weighted scans? So T2 weighted scans are opposite in fluid. So fluid is very bright. Here's the thecal sac. The fluid within the thecal sac is very bright. These nerve roots. And that's the easiest way for you to differentiate between a T1 and a T2 weighted scan. You can see that fat is also bright. So similar to a T1 weighted scan, fat is also bright. So that doesn't help you that much. You can go to the description and it will tell you it's a T2. So these are the two easiest ways to work out whether it's a T2 weighted scan or not. But the easiest one is just to look at the CSF. All right, so if we look at these two, this is a T1 here, a T2, so bright CSF, T2, dark CSF, T1, fat is bright on both of them. Okay, the third type of sequence you need to know about is a T2 fat sat, fat saturation, or a different a type of scan which produces the same result, which is also called a stir sequence. So what are these? So... The reason to do these fat saturated scans is to remove the fat signal. If we look at these two images here, we have a T2 weighted scan and a T2 fat saturated sequence. These are both from the same patient. We have bright fat. We've got some bright signal here, but it looks similar to fat. When we do the fat saturated sequence, you can see that all the fat has gone black. So all the bright signal from fat has been removed. But what's remaining is this really bright signal, which is fluid, similar to CSF. 
So if we go back to this, it's very hard to differentiate fluid from fat. So this is fluid, this is fat, but it's very hard to tell on that. But on here, it's really easy because here's the fluid, it's bright, and the apex of that triangle is dark, so that is fat. So the reason to do a T2 fat saturated sequence is to bring out fluid signal. And that's important when you have edema, particularly bone marrow edema, often there's bright fat signal also. So it gets rid of that and anything that's bright in bone after you fat saturate will be edema. Similar reason to use a stir sequence. This is a very common sequence to be performed. So most uh, often you will see a stir sequence rather than T2 fat set. Here's a T2, here's a stir sequence, same patient. This is the pelvic fat. And you can see that signal is completely gone. Okay, so it's become dark, so it's fat saturated. CSF is a bit brighter than it is on T2. And you can see the disc space is also the fluid in the disc spaces is much brighter than it is on a T2. So it brings out that fluid signal. So either a T2 fat saturated sequence or a stir sequence to remove the fat. These are really essential scans. They have to be done. And when you refer patients, the radiology department has to do these. They should, but if they don't do it, you should insist on it. Okay, so the fourth one is a post-contrast scan. Now, these scans, not common. You don't really need to give contrast for routine imaging in SPA. But if you ha happen to give contrast, we do a couple of things. One, this is the normal T1 weighted sequence that we've talked about. So fat is bright, CSF is low signal. We can also fat saturate these scans. And the reason we do that is that once you give contrast, if something's enhancing, it becomes very bright. And that bright signal can look very similar to fat signal. So what you need to do is remove the fat signal. So here's, here's fat, epidural fat. The signal is removed, and what remains this bright signal here is the enhancement due to the contrast, and this is uh, a vessel. So we can see the venous plexus here that's enhancing, but you would have trouble noticing that if you didn't fat saturate. And an example of that is this. So this is the same patient. We've got a fat saturated T1 weighted scan. CSF is dark. This is a non fat saturated scan through the same level, and you can see the enhancement here in the epidural space, and it's really obvious because it's, uh, it's dark everywhere else. This stands out. But if you don't fat saturate, this is the enhancement, but there's also a whole lot of fat signal around. So it's hard to know is this fat or not. So it just makes your life a lot easier. 